So my stance on artificial intelligence or whatever you want to call it is pretty simple. It can be useful, but you need to be cautious about it because you can become too reliant on it. And it's nowhere near perfect. In fact, it's not even close. It gets shit wrong all the time. So while I do use artificial intelligence sometimes to do some things, cloud code is pretty cool when you're trying to figure out how to use Emacs. I've tried in my everyday workflow to avoid it as much as possible, to seek out the answers that I need from other sources before resorting to going to ChatGPT or Claude or something. So I, I'm of the opinion that AI doesn't need to be everywhere. It'd be something, it should be something that we seek out, something that we deliberately use and are cognizant of the repercussions of using it. I think that that's the way that most people should look at it if they're rational about it. And for those of you who don't use artificial intelligence at all, I completely understand. Like, I, I get it. I understand all the environmental copyrights, all that kind of stuff, all the arguments against it. I get it. And I mostly agree with all that stuff. I still use it, but I, I try to be knowledgeable about the downsides of it as I do. So there's that. But there's one place I really don't want AI, and that's built into my browser. I have no interest in an AI browser whatsoever. I don't really want something that is going to browse the internet for me, because then what the hell am I here for? You know, so it doesn't really make much sense to me to have AI so ingrained into every inch of my workflow, which mostly happens in the browser. It just feels wrong in many fashions. So. For me, I want a browser that doesn't have AI. But unfortunately, if you look around, there aren't a lot of browsers out there that are without AI. Brave has their has Leo or whatever they call it. That you know, Firefox is integrating AI all over the place. Obviously, Chrome and Edge and all sorts of other browsers are putting together a whole bunch of AI goodies or whatever they're doing in order to make it sure sure you don't ever have to do any actual work to browse the internet. And None of that stuff excites me at all, and I am I just want a browser that doesn't have that. Now, there are still a few out there, a few Firefox forks specifically, that are probably never going to have AI. Things like Zen probably won't have AI. Something like Fork probably won't have AI, simply because they're very small teams. But even then, maybe someday they will. I don't know. But I will say this. Vivaldi has a very cool stance about artificial intelligence and that's what i want to talk about today because i do believe that vivaldi is the best browser for multiple reasons it has a lot of features you can customize it without having to hack it with css you can do a lot of stuff with it and it's just great so now it does have the downside of not being open source which is a, which is a bummer but i can overlook that because i agree with the vast majority of the other things that they do so when it comes to ai their stance looks a little bit like this. So we can just read this first paragraph here. Vivaldi takes a stand. Keep browsing human. Browsing should push you to ex explore, chase ideas, and make your own decisions. It should light up your brain. Vivaldi is taking a stand. We choose humans over hype, and we will not turn the joy of exploring into inactive spectatorship. Now, I will link to this whole article here so if you, you guys can actually read it. But to get the, to the, uh, their actual stance on AI... All right, we'll start here, actually. We will continue building a browser with, for curious minds, power users, researchers, and anyone who values autonomy. If AI contributes to that goal without stealing intellectual property, compromising privacy, or the open web, we will use it. If it turns people into passive consumers, we will not. Now, if you know anything about AI, you know that these things here are always going to be true. That's just the way that AI works. They take data from around the web congeal it into a machine learning thing. That's the technical term, by the way. And then spew out whatever it is that you want to have spewed out from. And, you know, if this is their stance, I'm pretty confident in saying that unless something drastically changes, Vivaldi's not going to have AI in it anytime soon. And I love that stance. I love the fact that they're putting humans first and are not jumping into the AI hype, and I really hope that they stick to it. I believe that they will. I don't think that they are ones to sell out uh, on an idea, simply because they haven't in almost 10 years of existing. Uh, maybe they've been around for longer than 10 years. I don't know. They've been around for quite a while, and when they take a stance on something, they seem to stick to it. 
I really like that they stick to their guns on this sort of thing, and it makes me confident that Vivaldi can be my browser going to the future, given my own stance on AI, which is, as I said at the beginning, I don't want it in my browser. I have no... If I want to use AI, I will go use AI. I, I will do that. I want it to be a conscious decision on my part to go use that kind of stuff, not something that is forced on me no matter what. It's one of the reasons why both Android and iOS are really bugging me lately is because you can't use these things without AI being literally everywhere, whether it's in the operating system itself and every application you go search for. Recently, I was trying to find something that might replace my mobile note-taking application because my next cloud situation was weird and I thought maybe I could find something different. I ended up finding a different solution with SyncThing, but it, what I wanted to do was just go find a note-taking application that kind of did some syncing for me. Every note-taking application you see now has AI in it. If, if the AI is going to take the notes for me, then what do I need a note-taking application for? You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense to me. I want to be able to control that kind of thing. Not everything has to have AI in it. So for Vivaldi, I'm glad that they've taken the stance. And this is not a new stance. They wrote a post about a year ago or so talking about how they just don't want to do AI in their browser. And it feels like this is a question that they get quite often. And it makes me curious about their audience because are, are there people in their audience that are clamoring for some kind of AI assistant built in? Because maybe that's the reason why they keep having to answer the question. And if that's the case, I hope they don't give in to those people simply because I want this to be a browser where that, that is AI free and so far, it looks like that's the direction they're going in. So for me personally, what I would say is this. If, you're in, if you are anti-AI and you can overlook the fact that Vivaldi is not open source, which is something that I know a lot of you can't overlook, but if you can, I think Vivaldi is the best browser out there simply because of the stance and all the features that it offers. The things like tab stacks and workspaces and built-in VPN and customization, all that kind of stuff, all the stuff that goes into Vivaldi being Vivaldi. I know it gets a lot of pruff for having too much, too many features, but personally, I like that kind of stuff. And I, I like that you can disable all of those features if you don't want to use them. So the, the ability to customize my browser basically however I want, but while having a modern browser, I think is fantastic. And this AI stuff just kind of makes it so much better. So that's it for this one. If you have any comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. It'd really, really, really help the channel. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I make Linux and open source related videos several times a week. So if you want to get that kind of stuff, just make sure you subscribe and you'll get all of my content. I really do appreciate those of you who have done so, obviously. And if you haven't already, please do that. I would really appreciate it. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There you'll find a, an exclusive weekly podcast that I post for all my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting in front of a microphone for 10 or 15 minutes, just rambling on about nonsense. This last episode was all about sync thing and trying to get my notes synchronized with sync thing it was a pretty good episode so if you want to hear that you can go support me on patreon or here on youtube members you can also support me by going to my merch store where you can get hats like this one i, I probably should be wearing the hat that i'm selling but the eagles won yesterday and i'm very very happy about it so i decided to wear my <laughs> so i decided to wear my eagles hat so but anyways if you want to get a, a hat like the linux nerd hat or any other type of merch i have a whole all sorts of stuff that shop Linuxcast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. Still not good at endings.